five, four, three, two, one, and we're live. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another live stream. Let's practice today. We're looking at Bach invention number 13 in A minor, which we will play in a bit. And we'll look at, I'd like to especially look at, uh, in this piece, uh, harmonic rhythm, and of course, technique and a bunch of other stuff. So hi to everyone joining the stream. Hi, one hour classics. Uh, I had to do a complete reboot of my system uh, last weekend. So hopefully everything works okay. So if there's any problem uh, with this audio, uh, please let me know. Hopefully this will work. All right, so invention number 13, here we go. Uh, we're gonna look at technique. There's a lot of, lot of rotation in this piece uh, mixed with wheel. It's really a good piece to look at technique. Uh, and you know, I think this is gonna be a pretty short one. So, okay, and uh, articulation as well. So technique, articulation, and harmonic rhythm. That's gonna be really interesting. This piece will talk a little bit about harmonic rhythm, and that should help you in any Bach piece that you're playing. You know, not just Bach, but especially Bach. Harmonic rhythm is very interesting, so even if you're not playing this piece. So here we go. We're just going to play this while waiting for people to connect. And without further ado, Bach invention number 13. <laughs> Right, there we have it Bach convention number 13 hi to everyone joining the stream let me know how the audio is if we don't have major audio problems all right so here we go so in a lot of these Bach pieces by Bach this the weaker note values it's usually eighth notes are detached right it just sounds much better than if we want to get the Especially that first thing in the left hand. We start out with a syncopation. So that's really nice. It's kind of a nice uh, way to start this piece if you really uh, give it some thought uh, before starting. That helps you. All right, now let's look a little bit at technique. So we got lots of lots of wheel going on, right? to uh, not not the most important rotation we're going to have in these pieces when we do so now we go back to using this kind of movement it's a really good practice this this piece so these are rotation then what would this be right now we're going there's wheel again rotation it and then in the left hand it's a little bit different right the, these three are three notes going down audio is perfect great and then rotation here so these three these three in, in wheel and then rotation here okay so I hope that's that's clear always just come back to the basics with the wheel and rotation more than, more than two notes, or let's say three notes, including the start one going in one direction. So 
you have a note and then two more that are going up, or a note and then two more that go down, use a wheel. And then when it zigzags up, down, up, down, you use this kind of movement here. And you can always see, if you really pay attention to your, to your hand, I like to use, you know, use the visual can really help you if you see that you're, you're, you're using the fingers, you know? That can help you to see if you got it or not, you know? That's finger, right? That's not rotation. This is rotation. You see how that looks different? So sometimes you can see how it looks different when you do it what, right or not. That really helps. And then, you know, we just apply this in the whole piece. I don't think we need to go through the whole thing, you know, but you have that everywhere, right? So you lots of rotation in this piece. You just it's really fun when you got it, right? This becomes a lot easier. But, you know, it's not the easiest invention. I think it's probably one of the more difficult ones. An easier one would be a number eight. You know, number one, of course. But number 14 is really beautiful as well. All right, so, yeah, I, I'm trying not to go into fingerings. Um, if you guys want me to talk about fingerings more, I will. But I just think it might be kind of boring to really go into fingerings and... Hi Fiona, hi David, hi everyone who's joined the stream. We're looking at Bach Convention number 13 in A minor. So, okay, yeah, exactly, you know. But maybe just one fingering place here is... I think that's the hardest part in this piece. So one, three, one, four, two, uh, five, four, two, one, or five, four, yeah, why is there three there? That's not good. Five, four, two, one, and then just keep that pattern. Five, four, two, one, th uh, two, three, five. Da -da 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 five, four, two, one, two, three, five, one, five, three, two, one, two, three, five, one, four, two, one. Uh, hi, Rana. Yeah. Okay. Let's look at. Let's. I want to talk about harmonic rhythm here because this is really cool. So, what is harmonic rhythm? It's the pace at which the chords are changing, right? So, one thing we might miss playing this, I think a lot of people might do this by mistake while playing this piece, okay? Something like this. All right, you feel that kind of harmonic rhythm I'm showing here, to here, to here, here. But, but there's something wrong with that, okay? There's something wrong with that. That's not exactly the harmonic rhythm. We have circle of fifths start here, 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 now double speed, here, 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 that's kind of interesting, right, so that's the kind of thing you want to show, remember our first example, you're playing this like this, that means you're not listening to, missing and so now when you get to bar three the pace has has slowed down right it's only twice a bar yeah right so we have that we don't have those are not two different chords we have only two chords per bar instead of four Mistakes. And then back to our uh, four different chords per bar, or four different, you know, chord instances per bar, starting on, on bar five. There we go. Okay, I hope that's
that's clear. Is that, I hope that explains a bit the harmonic rhythm. And then here's a cool thing, all right? Let's continue on this page of harmonic rhythm. At the end, we'll see something really different with this harmonic rhythm, something we haven't had in this piece, a much faster pace. All right, so. Five, one, five, one, five, one. In C major, yeah? I like to play this a little softer, you know, because we have this. Probably some kind of healthy mezzo forte or forte here. Not too loud, hopefully. Kind of like, you know, those organs with different sounds, you know, all of a sudden we'd be with a more like flute-like sound, you know. I don't know if you'd be able to do that with the organ with this piece, but that kind of thing, right? Very different texture. And now those detached notes become a little less short, you know, L not less detached. They're still detached, but less staccato. Yep. Yep. And now we have it. Kind of long, those detached notes. And then maybe back to normal there. And also a little bit of extra pedal, you know, that's really nice. Pace has gone back to twice a bar again. Yeah, every half note. And then, like in the beginning, that that pace accelerates again. So you have this many, many times in, in harmonic sequences. The pace starts out slow, and then there's an acceleration of harmonic rhythm. You'll have in a circle of fifths very often, not just. That's what we have here. So here, here, sorry, here, 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 here. All right, now here, I always like to play softer, but we do want to shape down the end of this, so maybe not too soft. at bar 16 would be nice too as long as bar 17 is less yeah this is coming down and down and down here softer bar 18 unlike our a minor beginning you this one is much less all right so we have maybe crescendo is debatable, yeah? Is it... Or is it... You know, I think maybe... That's nice like that. So see you. This feels like... F sharp, and then or five of five five. And this is like again one chord. That's like one chord. Or is it? an inversion of that diminished seventh. That's a different. And then get that seventh in the bass is really nice. And come down. 
decrescendo when you have that seventh. So. so we start a little softer here. Crescendo here. Now listen to this harmonic rhythm. Love this. I love that Bach does this, right? We've had on the quarter notes when it was faster and the and the half notes when it was slow, right? So here, 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 here. Now this is every eighth note here, here. Maybe this is that could be one chord, right? Now here, 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 and here. Yeah, we've had also an acceleration of harmonic rhythm at the end. This time on every eighth note. That's really cool, right? So if you play that in a way that, let's play it in a way that you don't show it first, okay? Let's say you that slipped you, okay? So here's the wrong way. It sounds kind of fine, right? But what we're doing here is... this see that subtle difference when you hear that the harmonic rhythm so so we have sorry all those little subtleties in it so basically here this this ending a little more it's a little easier to slow down you know it becomes a little more important yeah okay I think that's about as much as we're gonna look at this piece uh, we might just play it one last time uh, let's see here hi to everyone who's watching uh, everyone who's playing along or just listening or playing other things and learning stuff with this I've read that box scholars and Bach purists disagree greatly on using the pedal in Bach. Okay, pedal in Bach, you know, <clears throat> here's the thing. <laughs> Bach only had a harpsichord and we're playing, does that mean we should only play his music on a harpsichord? Right? So we kind of have to adapt to the modern situation of Bach. Now, having said that, yes, there's a kind of quality to the, we don't want to play the Baroque music like it's romantic music. We still want to have that Baroque feel to it, right? So pedal in Bach, as a rule, you could think that you should never really notice the pedal. You know, the pedal is there, but you don't really, we should never be able to tell that there's pedal unless you're going for a little different texture, like we are here. It sounds a little bit more organ-like, you know. <clears throat> I was always told that Bach didn't like the pianos. He didn't like the piano, you know because there were some pianos that existed in his time but they were such crappy pianos you know if you've ever like seen or heard what what one of these things you know like a clavichord or you know <laughs> so <laughs> they just weren't very interesting i'm not sure we would have liked them either you know the, the the definition of the sound was was so poor and by the end of his life there were a couple of pianos that were okay and he liked them you know but so we have to adapt we have to adapt with that, you know? Yeah, Rana says, my teacher says if, if Bach had a pedal, he would surely use it. So she approves. Exactly. You know, they just didn't exist in his time. Bach would have done amazing things with pedals. Look, we have different pedals on the organ, you know, and, and those are often sustained notes. It's like a third keyboard, but, you know, it's not the sustain, sustained pedal, but you, ha you have to, you know, listen to as much of Bach's music. Listen to the choir music, especially the cantatas, you know? Would you regard yourself a modern thinking Bach scholar who uses pedal? Because Bach would have, would have if he could have, or sometimes a Bach purist deciding some Bach. You know, I find this is kind of a ridiculous idea of a Bach purist doesn't use pedal. It's just a kind of, I don't know, it's a, 
doesn't make sense to me. You know, the pedal is turning the life, it's turning the instrument on, the piano becomes alive, the harmonics ring. There's no reason not to put pedal if you're just putting a chord down. It just makes the whole instrument vibrate more. The question is, how much pedal do you put, you know, as a Bach? Yeah, I would say I'm a Bach purist in the sense that I don't want it to be full of pedal, you know? I don't want, I don't want to play it so it sounds like, a, a, you know, romantic music or, you know, or that we can clearly tell that it's full of pedal or that, you know, you pedal this so... That's just not nice, you know? Every note is important in Bach. So you're not going to pedal so much and think... I'd honestly hardly pedal at all in this in this piece so you know but here you so just to have a different texture a different color we add a little pedal you know so this is the thing with Bach as a general rule just tell yourself if we can tell you're using the pedal it's probably too much in Bach you know I think that's a good way of looking at it so okay all right Okay, guys, this is a rather short one today. So uh, here we go. Bach, uh, you know, invention in A minor. Uh, take a look at the schedule. The link is in the description. We have a lot of live videos coming up. So just have a look at that. Lots of cool stuff. On Monday, we will look at the Haydn C major sonata. I love this sonata. Maybe one of the greatest Haydn sonatas. There's so many, you know. We should probably look at the E flat one as well. Uh, we will also be looking at later at the A major sonata, I think in uh, October. That's probably my favorite Haydn sonata of all time. So, okay, C major sonata on Monday. We'll also have The Girl with the Flaxen Hair, Debussy, on Friday, uh, September 11th. Uh, that is a really, uh, really awesome Debussy piece, The Girl with the Flaxen Hair. So, hi, Seek, Seek Yavi, Seek Yavi. Um, okay, so that wraps it up. If you want to be a patron also, check out what we got going on on Patreon. It's pretty cool. Uh, people are sending uh, uh, things they've played, and I'm listening to them and critiquing them. So that's kind of cool. Uh, and without for yeah, that's it. So <laughs> see you next week, guys. See you next uh, Monday at 12. We'll be back on with that Haydn Sonata. So happy practicing. Take care. Adios.